Hello again. In this video, we're going to continue our look at weathering, erosion, and deposition. And we're going to take a specific focus on erosion and deposition that's caused specifically by the force of gravity. Before we jump in, though, let's review what these key terms mean. Okay, so as we discussed in our previous video, weathering is the breaking down and changing of rocks as a result of exposure to their environment. So to give you an example, if I have a big giant boulder of granite that sits on the coastline for a million years, being battered by the waves and eventually broken down into little chunks of granite, that breaking down is an example of weathering. And of course, there are lots of different forces on Earth that cause weathering to take place. Erosion happens next. So this is the transportation of sediments, little chunks of rock, that have already been broken down by weathering processes. So once that big boulder of granite has been broken into smaller chunks by the waves, it is then transported or moved from point A to point B. And that movement can be caused by any number of things. As I mentioned, you could get little chunks being bounced along in the, the bed of a stream or dragged along by a, a sheet of ice or a glacier um, or simply falling downhill because of gravity. And that's what we're going to look at today. Once a sediment has been eroded, it is often then deposited. And all that means is it is dropped off. So once our little chunks of rock have been broken off and then moved, they then get deposited. So that's important. You need to keep those terms in mind. Um, now, as for today, I said we're going to look specifically at gravity. And as always, we have a little handout, a little worksheet that you can go grab from the website so you can follow along. And uh, so let's dive in. Uh, so we're beginning our look at these different agents of erosion. So agents of erosion simply means different processes on Earth that move sediments along and then they are then deposited. Um, and so as I've already kind of mentioned here, there are lots of different agents of erosions, water, ice, wind, etc. Today, we're going to specifically look at gravity. Now, I do want to point out that in reality, most of the agents of erosion are indirectly caused by gravity, right? So that river flowing downhill, that glacier flowing downhill, that's actually caused by gravity. But for our purposes today, we're going to specifically focus on erosion caused solely by gravity. So in essence, things falling downhill. And that's what we're looking at today. Um, and so we have a name for whenever gravity pulls sediment downhill. It's called a mass movement. Um, and that's because it is essentially the movement of mass. So the movement of rock and soil and mud and vegetation, etc. And so you can see some examples of mass movements in nature here. And uh, there are some subtle differences between the different types, and we're going to look at those today. All right. So uh, we are actually going to look at four types. All right. And here are those four types. Let's go through each one, starting with uh, the slowest one, which is called soil creep. So as we see in the diagram, soil creep is this gradual downhill movement of soil. So we're not really talking about big chunks of rock here. We're not necessarily talking about mud. We're talking about soil. And we're also talking about a very slow process. So this isn't some violent um, falling down that happens rapidly. This may happen over weeks, months, years, decades, or even longer. OK, so that's soil creep. Second up is something we call debris flow. Sometimes this is called a landslide. And so this is much more rapid. So it's when a collection of debris, and we use the term debris because it can really include anything from all sizes of rock, soil, mud, vegetation, um, anything. When that debris falls rapidly downhill, we call it a debris flow or a landslide. Third, we have a mud flow, or sometimes it's called a mudslide. And so again, this is the downward flow of fine particles, so very small particles, which is what we refer to often as mud, and water. So these mudslides or mud flows are often associated with big storms with a lot of rain and precipitation that makes the soil on a slope unstable until it eventually gives way and starts sliding downhill. They can be very dangerous, as you can imagine. Finally, we have a rock fall, or often called a rock slide. 
and this is pretty self-explanatory. This is rapid dropping or falling of pieces of rock, usually off of a cliff or a very steep slope. All right, and so we're going to go through each of these and look at some real-world examples so you can kind of visualize what these processes look like in nature. And we will begin with a mudslide or a mud flow. So again, this often um, follows large precipitation events, so lots of rain when the soil becomes this thick, gooey, viscous mud that gravity can then cause to slide downhill. Uh, it can be very dangerous. These mudslides can engulf entire villages or communities, um, basically swallowing up anything in their path. Uh, here you can see a short video clip of an actual mudslide happening. Um, you can see it's fairly quick, not quite as quick necessarily as a rock slide or a landslide, but fairly quick and fairly dangerous. Um, so then we can look at a rock slide or a rock fall. Um, and again, this is exactly what you would expect it to be. Usually very steep slopes or cliffs and big chunks of rock bouncing their way downhill. Obviously very violent, just destroying anything in its path. Um, again, here you can see a little video clip of a, a rock slide in progress. Um, obviously taken from very far away for safety, but um, you can start to get a, a sense of just how powerful this is as those chunks of rock just barrel their way down the hill. Oftentimes, we'll take some preemptive actions to try and um, keep highways and, and populated areas safe, and that can be done by knocking loose rocks off on purpose so that it's in a controlled environment. Um, what's neat about this is you can really get a sense of just how powerful and, and scary this process actually is. So here we have a helicopter using a wrecking ball. Um, so pretty, pretty scary stuff. Um, Next, we have a landslide or debris flow. And again, this is a mixture of materials falling fairly rapidly. So it might be sand or silt. It might be boulders. Um, it might be vegetation. Pretty much anything falling all together. Um, and you get some, some pretty powerful examples here. This video made its way around the Internet a few years back, and it's a pretty jarring example of a landslide. You're going to see the entire slope give way here, and everything goes with it. The fence, the telephone poles, entire trees. Um, so very, very scary stuff. Um, finally, last one is soil creep. And again, this is probably the most tame out of all of them. This is very slow gradual movement of, of soil primarily and then vegetation on top downhill over a longer period of time. So this is not something you would stand there and observe. It's something that would take place over, in many cases, years and years. Um, you can often tell when it's happened by looking at things like telephone poles or fences and seeing how they're not lined up like they originally were because the soil that they are anchored in has actually moved. So you can see that here as well. So those are our four examples of mass movements. Now, there's one more key thing you want to know, and that is that um, because most, not all of these, are rapid and often violent, the sediments that are deposited tend to be angular and unsorted. So let's just break down those two words. So angular refers to the shape of the sediments. So all the little chunks that we see at the bottom of a slope, for example, are going to tend to be sharp and jagged and irregular. They're not smooth and rounded out like we might see in a river, for example. And that's because of how they were eroded and deposited. They bounced violently down the side of a hill, giving them these sharp kind of jagged edges. Um, and then the second word there is unsorted. And so that just means mixed up. So we're going to have everything from big giant boulders down to cobbles and pebbles and sand and silt and clay. So all different size sediments from giant to tiny mixed together. Um, there's no mechanism to sort them out, um, which is something we do see when sediment is deposited in water. Um, because in water, the larger chunks will settle faster and the smaller chunks will settle slower. So we do see what we call sorting. Uh, in gravity examples like we've been looking at, we don't get that. Everything is just basically dumped all at once, and so it's all mixed up. Okay, so just to sum up, a couple key ideas here. So the erosion of sediment caused by gravity we call a mass movement. Um, and we went through some different types, and these include soil creep, debris flow, rock slide, and mudslide. 
And then we need to know that these are going to deposit angular and unsorted sediment. And so that's our look at erosion and deposition caused by gravity. Be sure to check back for our next videos in which we'll take a look at glaciers and rivers and wind and all the different types of erosion and deposition that takes place. Thanks for watching.